Hello everyone, I have recently gotten the Gonsai Tambi Japanese watercolor set. I've got the 36 colors, which is the largest of the range, and I wanted to share mine with you and a few things that I've discovered about it. They come with these beautiful metallics in the largest set, and they come really well packaged, looked after. They come straight from Japan, and they are a traditional Japanese watercolor that is a professional artist grade quality, which means that they're very highly pigmented. And the packaging is really nice. You can see that they're not just a half pan or even a full pan set. They're kind of like extra large. So there's a lot of paint in each one of these pots and you can take them right out of their container and just deal with the ones you want or just have them sit in the whole set right there with you. And you hardly have to even put any water to lift any of the color off of the pan, which can be unusual for some pan sets because they will stay so dry that you have to kind of hydrate them. But these are very easily hydrated and they're highly pigmented. You can see a kind of a linen finish on the box there. And it comes with the lid ready to put your samples in. There are Japanese names on this set and the back says a number which is correlated on the bottom, but you can see that that's also on the inside of the lid. So I'm getting that settled and putting the different colors in. And I wanted to show this to you because as you can see, some of these colors actually look like they're almost black. And really it's because they're so highly pigmented. The only other set that I have that's a professional artist quality like this that have the same sort of feel would be the peerless watercolors where they're just so highly pigmented that you really can't tell the color of them until you test it out. So I wanted to show you a bit of it. There's some really beautiful colors and I really enjoyed being able to start to play with them. They have a very creamy texture. They go on very nicely. Everybody has nice things to say about them and I am certainly another one of those. They may come looking like they have tiny cracks or little air bubbles inside of the colors, but that is completely natural and there's no reason to worry about that whatsoever. I dabbed a bit of the black because I wanted to get a very graded feel to kind of see what would happen between the black and the gray. And here you can see the metallics shine really well, which is unusual for pan sets. Now I went online and as you can see this chart here, has some colors. This was very hard to dig up, but it looks like the old packaging that Kurataki used to offer did actually show the English version of the names that they've given these particular colors. And so I dug that up and I have gone ahead and written the name in English. Many people claim that these don't have any English names, but I think it really is down to the packaging and I'm really pleased with this. I will leave a copy of this image that I'm using over on my blog so that you can go ahead and download it if you decided to get some of these. I just wanna do slightly bit of a review, I guess, on this because these are a bit more of an investment and really they will last you for a very long time. and they're so good quality that you hardly need any of them. So I wanted to just show you something because, so I'm pulling a couple of these colors out because a lot of people say that this type of watercolor is a bit opaque, but I believe that is down to how people are actually applying it because I am showing you here in my um, altered art journal that I'm working on. I've put some Art Basics Clear Gesso on the left hand page and I've left the right hand page blank so it's just the paper and I'm going to do the same thing on both sides so you can see the difference between the two pages and how it acts. It is an old paper so they tend to be a bit thicker and better quality. It doesn't bleed through as much but the bleed through wasn't as much of an important factor as it was to show you how it acts on gesso as opposed to straight paper that has a porous texture. And really you can see that because I'm using very little of this, it's going on like a traditional watercolor and I can build up that and make it very, very opaque like some other people do show if I choose to use 
way more of it, but I don't really have to do that. As you can see, the page on the right that does not have the gesso is absorbing a bit more color. So it is a slightly bit darker, but it's really just perfectly acceptable as you would expect of watercolors and really high quality. I hardly used any color. So I just wanted to show that to you. There are a few smaller colors, but the metallics only come in this large set, which I think is highly worth it. So if you want to find out about these products, just head over to my blog where I will link to the different sets and the English names and that sort of thing. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon.